Hey everybody, Jazzy here. In today's Don't Starve Together guide, I want to show you my absolute favorite way to farm rocks in the game. The method uses stone fruit in combination with Wickerbottom books, Maxwell Servants, and Wilson Alchemy. This guide does assume you have access to the Celestial Portal because there will be a bit of character swapping needed. You will also need a fair bit of resources to set this up, so it's not much of a great early game farm. But if you're ready to take your late game grind to the next level, then stick around. I would recommend building the farm as wicker bottom since you will need to craft up books, but after the initial setup, I would run the farm as Maxwell. To get started, you'll need some stone fruit. So sail to the lunar island and dig up the bushes you find there. Replant and refertilize them at your base, then harvest them whenever they ripen. Your goal is to get a minimum of 10 sprouting stone fruits. If you get more, it'll make the farm slightly faster, but 10 is enough and I definitely wouldn't go higher than 20. Why not just use the bushes you stole from the moon? I'll explain that later. Anyway, sprouts are a 1% drop from mined stone fruit, so this process may take a while, but while they're growing, you could start gathering resources for the books. We are going to make a bookcase and eventually fill it with horticulture abridged books. Now, you may be asking, why not use horticulture expanded? So let me explain. Horticulture expanded is really designed to benefit farm plants. But for stone fruit, there's no big difference in application. The abridged book will ripen 10, and the expanded will ripen 15. Except you get five uses from each abridged book, where with expanded books you only get three. So do the math, that's 50 ripened plants versus 45. So you will actually get more stone fruit per session when you use the cheaper book, and you will save yourself a lot of papyrus. Now, they may be cheaper, but these books are not cheap. Each one is going to cost five generic seeds, five manure, and two papyrus. So building a bookcase and filling them with 20 of these books is going to set you back quite a bit. The good news is you can start running your farm before all these resources are gathered. You will just need to switch back to Wicker Bottom on occasion to craft more books. If you do manage to gather all of the resources prior to construction, then great! But even if you have enough for 10 books, you might want to start building. The farm will still be plenty efficient. Either way, I'll give you a couple quick pointers for easily gathering these resources. 100 seeds aren't too bad, just grab them when dropped by birds and store them in an ice box or seed packet. The quickest way to get 100 manure is to feed 4 monster meat to a pig and drop a bunch of food for the were pig to convert. You can give them stone fruit that you've been collecting while looking for sprouts, or just go to the caves and pick a combination of foliage and light bulbs. Either way, this is a relatively easy resource to check off. The 176 reeds, on the other hand, are going to be the most painful resource to gather. You can make regular trips to the swamp, but you will need to wait for them to grow and are not guaranteed to get a lot generated. The best way to farm reeds as Wickerbottom is a monkey tail farm. Monkey tail plants are found on the Moon Key Island and also pop out daily from the portal on the island. You can feed the portal moon gleams from the moonstorm if you want to accelerate this process. But even grabbing just 20 monkey tails can quickly get you to your goal for this project because a single reed from applied silviculture will immediately grow all of them. You can use the reeds you harvest to make more silviculture books and eventually you can have absolutely massive reed harvests. Once you have everything, it's time to build the farm. Now for location, I would recommend building on the lunar island. Reading books will quickly make you insane and even if you use a bone helm to safely farm on the mainland, after a few reeds you will be be surrounded by shadow creatures and it can become impossible to open containers or target anything. The Lunar Island is just a better place for book reading. Now grab a pitchfork and dig out a 5x5 area with the corners removed. This will give you a shape that is a rough approximation of the harvesting range of Maxwell's shadow servants. The idea is that Maxwell will summon servants onto the center tile and they will gather stone fruit from all the surrounding bushes. Make sure that whatever turf you use for the majority of the build will allow for plants and is also more dominant than the surrounding turf. Moon Crater is a high dominance turf so it works fine. Now build your bookcase anywhere you want. You could even place it right in the center if you like. Maxwell can summon Shadow Duelists anywhere, including on top of structures. Also, be sure to place a lightning rod nearby. Load up your books in the bookcase, and now you can start planting your sprouting stone fruit in the surrounding area. The reason you want to use sprouts for this farm, and not just the bushes you dug up on the island, is because stone fruit plants grown from sprouts 
do not require fertilizer. If you use the transplanted bushes, you'll need to fertilize after every few harvests, so this just ensures that you won't need to stop for that while you're reading. It'll take five days to get the bushes, so you can take that time to decorate the area around the farm. I'd recommend placing a few chests down so that you can store extra stone fruit while farming. If you plan on reading 20 books in a session, then you can easily fill up nine chests with stone fruits. When you're done, sail back to the portal and switch to Maxwell. And then when you're ready to farm, grab your codex and sail back over. Make some space in your inventory and summon all six of your servants in the center of the farm. Now you can start to read the books. Each read will ripen 10 plants, so while your servants are harvesting, you can read again to ripen some of the other plants. Just don't read faster than your servants can work, and don't read any book that's 20% or less because the book will break. I'd recommend reading once from each book and then cycle back through. It'll give the book some time to regenerate so that you can eventually get five total uses from each book. As your servants deliver stone fruit, you will want to store it in your nearby chests. If your inventory gets full and servants start dropping stone fruit on the ground, they will start to mine it out, which distracts them from harvesting and will also make a mess. Gather now, harvest later. Once your books have been exhausted, you should dismiss all of your servants. Now, you have a couple options here for harvesting all the stone fruit you just farmed. Servants can mine them out, but it'll take a while to pick up all the resulting loot, even with help. If you go this route, I'd recommend using a lazy forager to safely gather up all the sprouts, then burn all the stone fruits, and then pick up the rocks that remain. My favorite method for harvesting a ton of stone fruit is gunpowder. A single explosion can harvest up to 20 full stacks of stone fruit, and the loot will very conveniently stack automatically. Just make sure your shadow servants are dismissed before lighting anything on fire. So let's run some numbers on this farm. You get three stone fruit per harvest, and one read of the book gets you 10 harvests. So in one session, 100 total book reads should net you around 3,000 stone fruit. With a 35% chance of a rock win mined, the fruit should net you around 1,000 rocks per session. If you're grinding cobblestone, you can switch to Wilson and alchemy some of the rocks into flint. Assuming you don't provide any additional flint, 1,000 rocks on its own is enough to craft up over 400 cobblestones. And of course, you can scale this farm up with another bookcase and more books, but it's kind of wasteful because you could just come back six days later and all of your books will be back to 100%. This compact farm is easily the only source of rocks you will ever need. Not even to mention the absolutely massive amount of food that this farm will generate. And the best part? The only upkeep cost is a bit of codex fuel and optionally a few pieces of gunpowder. Absolutely nothing compared to the time and resources you will expend on clearing a petrified forest. Anyway, that's the farm. Hope you found the guide useful and let me know if you have any questions about it. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.